fear is lucrative. Fear is big business. One of the more odd and perhaps more extreme examples is this. This is the Thudguard helmet. Thudguard.com. This, I couldn't have made this up if I tried. Um, this is an actual product available online as we speak out of the UK. Um, these are helmets that children should wear, <laughs> should according to the people of course who are selling them, in the home. <laughs> Sitting on their bums playing in the, uh, in the living room or in the kitchen. I think their slogan is learning to walk in a world of hard surfaces. And they quote all sorts of scientific uh, facts. Um, for me, this really is the, the ultimate example of the slippery slope that we're on. Is this really where we want to be headed after 250,000 years of Homo sapiens? <laughs> I don't know. Another example, another example is closer to home. Apart from the Netherlands, Denmark is the safest country in the world in which to ride a bicycle. Never before has it been so safe to do so than it is right now. So for me, it was a bit bizarre to see this recent wave of bicycle helmet promotion in this country. And when it started, I became sincerely curious. I knew nothing about it, and I decided to check out the facts for myself. This is what I was taught to do. Um, to my surprise, it didn't take me very long to figure out that the bicycle helmet doesn't have a very impressive track safety record, scientifically. Um, scientists, the scientific community, has been completely split for years on the subject, 50-50, down the middle. If you look at it this way, if the bicycle helmet was a vaccine or a medicine, there's no way it would be anywhere close to getting approved by Ministry of Health. There's simply not enough proof. Um, now I spent over two and a half years researching this subject, and damn, do I need a new hobby. I can tell you that right now. <clears throat> when you come from a literary background, this, you know, reading scientific reports is not that much fun. Um, but it is amazing the things you find out. I mean, there's an ocean of science out there, but, you know, there's, there are actually scientific studies that show that your risk of brain injury is higher when you're wearing a helmet, and that you have a 14% greater chance of getting into an accident with a helmet on. These are not things that we hear about too often, so much for showing us the big picture. Um, the way that these helmets um, are tested, um, well, actually, the industrial design of the helmets, first of all, <clears throat> my son helped me out with this. <laughs> um, from an industrial design perspective, these helmets are designed, I found out, to protect the head from non-life-threatening impacts in solo accidents under 20 kilometers per hour. We can all hear that that excludes getting hit by a car, so please don't do that, whether you're wearing one or not. Um, the way that they're tested in the laboratory is interesting. They're tested only for impact on the crown of the head. They're not even tested for impact on any of the sides. Um, and actually, the test that they go through in the laboratory is nothing more than a simulation of a pedestrian falling and hitting their head on the sidewalk. So I thought, wow, <laughs> it's true. Um, wow, you know, wouldn't that really make them great for, you know, pedestrians? Um, <clears throat> uh, I was surprised to find out that pedestrians have a higher risk of head injury than people on bicycles do, you know? To my amazement, the Danish Road Safety Council doesn't have any campaigns for pedestrian helmets. I was shocked. So I made one for them. Um, the PDF is freely available for download at no cost to the taxpayer. Um, it works better in Danish, but it says a walking helmet is a good helmet. And if it is a slippery slope that we're on, then this is probably a very good idea. But the thing about the culture of fear is it doesn't really worry about facts or science. They're a nuisance. They clutter up the ideology, and they get in the way of making a lot of good money as well. So I thought, you know, hey, pedestrian helmets, haha. -ha. What about, hey, motorist helmets? Maybe motorists should wear helmets. Wouldn't that be funny? Boy, was I amazed when I found out that motorist helmets have actually, in all seriousness, been invented. Not even, I couldn't even make this up. <laughs> um, the Swedes played with the idea, of course, the Swedes, in the 1960s. Um, but in the late 1980s, the helmet at the top came onto the market. A company started producing it, saying, enough is enough. Um, in 2001, the University of Adelaide and Monash University in Australia produced this motorist headband. Um, they did so after an Australian government study showed that um, that country could save up to $400 million a year in reduced injury and death, reduced societal harm, as it's called, if everybody inside the cars were wearing protective headgear, even with seatbelts and airbags. <laughs> Does anybody here own one? <laughs> Have you ever seen them on sale at, at, at the supermarket? Have you ever been offered a free one when you buy a car? No. God, that might be logical or rational. Um, another teaser, sorry. <laughs> um, I've discovered, well, I didn't discover, but the helmet industry is actually very interested in everybody buying their products. You know, there's 
no surprise there. I discovered that one of the other main promoters of helmets is the insurance industry, even in this country. Again, no brainer as to why. Um, what I did discover was that the automobile industry is one of the main promoters of bicycle helmets. And why? It's, it's simple, really. The bicycle is a real and immediate threat to the dominance of car culture in our cities. Um, and the reason you've never been given the opportunity to purchase these fine products is that the car industry won't touch them. They excel at marketing their products. And, um, you know, if, if they know that it would be a catastrophe for car sales, if we started telling people that, you know what, driving a car is proven to be statistically incredibly dangerous, if we remove that false sense of security that people have about their cars, um, if word got out that 1.2 million people a year are killed in car accidents all around the world, over 40,000 in the United States alone, if you think about that, that's a World Trade Center every month, year in and year out. But no, 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 people would stop buying cars, driving them less. They might start taking public transport or, ooh, God forbid, take bicycles in, in our cities. And, and we can't have that. Of course not. Um, if we apply logic to the culture of fear,